Today on The Spirit Contemporary Life, we pray to God in the name of Jesus. And there's authority and power, but it's Holy Spirit that brings it into being, that manifests the miraculous, the blessing, the supernatural. Many of us want to make an impact on the world around us. We work hard to gain the approval or the respect of our family, our friends, and our co-workers. We've been called to go and reach the nations with the good news of Jesus, right? So then, how come so many Christians eventually burn out? If it's really what we're called to do, then why do so many Christians end up losing their passion and their energy for the cause? Because they're doing it on their own strength. On today's show, I'd like to share with you what it looks like to do life with Holy Spirit. Don't go anywhere. We're going to begin to talk about a topic that I think is going to help you so much. The Bible teaches us that if you are a member of the body of Christ, which means you gave your life to Christ, that it's not just for you to be blessed, although his blessings are amazing. You'll have no sense of purpose in your life. You'll have no sense of accomplishment. You'll struggle with self-worth, significance, if you don't recognize that when you give your life to Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit is on the inside of you so that you can develop the fruit of the Spirit, which is love and joy, peace, patience, long-suffering. I mean, he changes us, but then there's also Holy Spirit upon us, which is for ministry every day. And so as you look ahead of you and you go, what am I going to do with my life? Where am I going? Let's dive right now into God's Word and let's show you how important it is to partner with Holy Spirit, to allow Him to lead you, guide you, direct you, but to recognize that He is our helper. So today as I get into this message, listen, just sit down for a minute and begin to understand because as I travel around this planet, I find the body of Christ is on their own energy trying to live their own lives, careers, and families, which is hard without Holy Spirit, and limited, and then even the, their ministry, what they do in their church, and witnessing to others, praying for their friends and family in need, that there's just no power in their lives because they've not learned to partner with Holy Spirit. So let's start here in Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. And here's what it says. I'm reading from the Amplified. It says, Live not in your own strength, for it is God who is all the while effectually at work in you, energizing and creating in you the power and the desire both to will and to work for his good pleasure, satisfaction, and delight. You know, people who give their lives to Jesus Christ, they often lose this passion for God. Things rise up, problems, disappointments, discouragements. They get weary in doing well, and they just start drifting away. Others have never learned to access the power that is available to them. So as circumstances rise, whether it's sickness, whether it's marriage problems, financial problems, whether it's an attack on the mind, they begin to struggle. And the Bible says in Mark chapter 4 that this persecution, it causes them to wilt and to just die away in their relationship with God. It's crucial that we understand that Jesus told us in John chapter 14, he said, it's important that I go away. As I go away, Holy Spirit is going to come to you. And he is going to be, and it literally means as he teaches us, another comforter just like Jesus was. 
When you look at the, the Trinity, the triunity, whichever word that you use, neither of those words is in the Bible, but we know that it's God. There's like one, there's like one God in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That Jesus, he gave up forever whatever form that he had before he put on human body. He came as a baby. He grew up to 33 years of age. He died for you and I. And in front of his disciples, in that human body, which was raised from the dead, he arose into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father is Jesus, the Son of God, the King of kings, in a human body forever. And he literally, and so when you look at this, so Jesus could only be in one place at one time. But Holy Spirit is everywhere. He's omnipresent. He can help all of us simultaneously. And so just like Jesus functioned with the disciples in power, in leading, in comfort, in looking after them, Holy Spirit now is on this planet. Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father as our intercessor, our advocate, and he's there representing what he did to die for you and I. And so we pray to God in the name of Jesus. There's authority and power, but it's Holy Spirit that brings it into being, that manifests the miraculous, the blessing, the supernatural. And so we need to fellowship with Holy Spirit. We need to know why he's here in our lives. And so this one verse is power packed. And just to understand this one verse will change your life forever. Let me read it again. We shouldn't be living in our own strength. Philippians 2.13 Amplified. For it is God Okay, and in this case, God, this, the Holy Spirit, who is all the while effectually at work in you. What's he doing on the inside of you? He's energizing you. There are those who live in God's perfect will. I mean, they are dead on track. They are perfectly aligned with the path he's prepared ahead of time. Have you ever felt sometimes like you've got no energy, no drive, life has gotten humdrum, it's beaten you down, you no longer have a dream, a vision, you used to when you were younger, but now you think maybe you were just naive, and you're realizing just settle in, my marriage is good enough, my career is good enough, I guess I'll just attend church and when I can witness. It's like you're no longer energized. The Bible says Holy Spirit energizes you, and not only that, He creates. Now, the word create means to make, and God can make from nothing. He creates in you the power and the desire, both to will and to work for God's good pleasure, his satisfaction, his delight. What is power and what is desire? You know, the Bible says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Why is that? Because when you delight yourself in the Lord, you begin to fellowship with Holy Spirit, you begin to get into his word, there's a push in you to fellowship with God. You're gonna find that power rises up on the inside of you. It's Holy Spirit power, the power of God. And not only does this power rise up to handle emergencies, but this power is there to build family, to build careers, to build a country, to build organizations. All of these things are a part of what you were anointed for. And the word anointed means simply that, you know, that you were set apart and God's presence comes on you. This verse is telling us that you can just have a desire for the things of God. I've noticed in my life that when I get out of the Word and I get out of fellowship with the Holy Spirit, praying in the Spirit, that my desire begins to lessen for spiritual things. And oh, my flesh, which is all my physical desires, just focusing on myself, that that begins to rise up. And if you don't allow, if you don't allow Holy Spirit and you don't focus on His Word and fellowship with Him, you're going to find that your desires can get really strong in wrong areas. And 
it's not that any of your physical desires are wrong. Uh, if they're in the, if it's the way God designed you, then when it comes to desires for food, desires for significance, desires for sex, desires for laughter and joy and having fun, all of these things are fine if they're met according to the way God designed you to meet them. And so, but when you get out of the Word, you get out of fellowship with the Holy Spirit, you'll begin to do things with those desires, or that's all you think about. I'm, this, I'm not, I don't feel satisfied. I'm not getting, I, I want more food. Let's just go out and party and eat and, and, and all of a sudden, and I need more sex and I need this. Like You literally get so preoccupied with the physical world. In Romans chapter 8, it teaches us to be carnally minded. Now the word carnally there simply means sense minded. You've got five senses, what you see, what you touch, what you need to feel, uh, you know, what you hear. When all of your focus in life is in that area, it's your whole world is focused now on the physical world. And it's saying you need to be spiritually minded. You know why? You were designed to be spiritually minded. You are a spirit. And because you're a spirit being, you've got to give your life to Jesus Christ. Now that you're serving him, if you do not begin to focus on God and get your strength from him, your desires can go off even as a Christian. And the power that you need uh, for, the, for, for your marriage, raising kids, for handling the enemy's attacks, you know, it, it, it's there, but you're not walking in it. And so he gives us, um, it says he creates in us power and desire. These two things mean so much to me. I want the desires of God. I want to desire the things of God, the direction God gives me. All of that, I want to keep those desires because I know that's the way to go. I know if I get off of God's desires and I go my own path, my own way, whoa, that's hard. And it can be destructive. I want for my kids, my grandkids, my church, the organizations that, that I lead, I, I want to be filled with God's power, but filled with his desires. Then it goes on to say in Philippians 2.13, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Did you know that when you do things for God and it's God's good pleasure, how much it changes your life? Even Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 says that don't be conformed to this world. Okay, it's desires and thinking, but it says be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You know, I don't want to live in God's just goodwill, just getting through life but keeping Jesus as my Lord. I don't want to just be in God's acceptable will, just meaning that, you know, things are going okay. Uh, you know, I, I'm not turning my back on God. I'm doing what I can to help out. And it's good and it's acceptable and God will do what he can with you. But there are those who live in God's perfect will. I mean, they are dead on track. They are perfectly aligned with the path he's prepared ahead of time. And as they do that, there's a passion, a desire within them, the power to overcome every bit of quicksand, every attack of the enemy, every temptation to get you off course. God is on the inside of you rising up. And this is what I want for you, both to have God's will. God's will should be your will. And it can be if you listen to Holy Spirit and get into God's Word. And it says that God wants you to work for His good pleasure. You know, we often get involved in work and we'll all work hard for things that are important to us. I remember neighbors of mine uh, getting a, a new house and, and they didn't have lawns and garden furniture uh, uh, you know, or flowers or flower beds. It was just kind of all dirt around their house. And to watch them work, they would both come home from full-time jobs with kids. And I saw them out in the yard and they didn't have the money, to, I think, to put all that in. So they were learning and laying down dirt and cutting you know, things for tears and putting in flower beds and then putting in sod and then putting in shrubs and trees. I mean, day after day, week after week, they were going at this. Their kids were dirty and they were so passionate about it because they're building their home. They're making the yard for their kids. And I, I totally agree with them. It was beautiful when they got done. They were exhausted every day, but there's a big old smile on their face as they saw their yard taking shape. When it was all done, they had something beautiful. And we as people will often work hard at things that benefit us. There's nothing wrong with that. You go for it. But here it says we need to work for God's good pleasure, satisfaction, and delight. 
Now, by the way, God is delighted to see you have a beautiful yard and a beautiful home and a place to call your own and to raise your kids. By the way, God is totally delighted with you in that. He'll work with you at prospering and, and raising your kids, your family, your marriage, your career. God's all over that. But don't just stay there. Don't just stay there. You know, one of the things we've taught here, and I teach a lot of business people, is that success in life is very personal and God will help you succeed. Everything in the Bible is about helping you succeed. Nobody gets married to fail. They get married to succeed. No one goes into a career wishing they fail. No, they want to succeed. No one forms friendships, relationships, wanting them to fail. Everything about us is to succeed and everything about God is to help you succeed. But to move from success, one more step up is to move from success to significance. And significance is always about using your success or just using your life to bless others. Significance is never about yourself. It's always about others. And so Holy Spirit, he wants you to have God's will, God's desires, and he wants to work with you to do something powerful for the kingdom of God, which could be helping your neighbors, showing acts of kindness everywhere you go so that people begin to be drawn to the Jesus in you, getting involved in your local church, volunteering, rolling up your sleeves. There is a work that we can do with our lives. And don't allow the enemy Think you go, oh, I got to go help out at church. Or, I'm just tired of always reaching out to others. When can I ever just have my own time for myself? And, and I, of course, we have to live balanced, but you got to be careful with that word. But when you reach out to others, which is doing God's work, it's allowing God to love others through you. You'll never be more powerful. You'll never be more, um, what's the word, uh, energized. You'll never be more joyful than when you are reaching out to do God's work and to bring his word and his blessing into other people's lives, to share your faith, your story with someone that doesn't know Jesus, to help another brother in the Lord, whether it's menial things or hard things, to live our lives only focused on success will literally bring success, but inside it will bring a leanness or a haunting, a discontentment to your soul because you are called to reach out and to always be blessing and ministering to others. In the New Testament, we only have two commandments, which is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your might, all your soul, all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. So whenever we find Jesus talking about commandments now and obeying his commandments, you know, the commandments of the law that Moses got are different. The commandments Jesus gives are to love. When you love people, when you love your neighbor, when you want God's love towards that person who's out in the rain with a flat tire and you begin to just feel love, to show acts of kindness, to reach out to help others, you are now walking and living a life that is going to be so satisfying. There will never be enough money to make you happy. And it's one of the greatest traps in the world is success, where you look at money or you look at uh, being powerful or you look at being applauded by all your peers in your career. Those are traps. If you're looking for significance, for a sense of who I am, those will destroy you. But if you know who you are in Christ first and you build a great career with the purpose of, first of all, serving the kingdom of God, because it says, seek first the kingdom of God with everything you do. You should seek first God's kingdom with your marriage. You should seek first even raising your kids should be for God's kingdom first, even before you try to make them happy and successful. And everything you do, your marriage, your career, your family, your kids, is always about seeking God's kingdom first. And when you do that, the gifts in your kids, the gifts in you will rise up, whether it's doctors, lawyers, and there'll be a purpose to it. And so we've got to understand that when you look at Holy Spirit, in our lives. He's energizing us. He's effectively at work in us, raising up power, giving us the desire. And so I want you to understand, don't veer away from God's word. Don't veer away from prayer and just fellowshipping with Holy Spirit because he's always speaking to us. We live 
in a world, and I often hear other pastors say things like, you know, I went through a real hard time where God never spoke to me for a few months or a few years, and, and they've got different reasons for that, but that's not biblical. Now, they're going into Old Testament stories to develop that, but in the New Testament, Holy Spirit is within us. He's within our human spirit, and he will never leave us, never forsake us. He's always guiding us, always leading us into truth, always giving us direction, always raising up power and a desire. If you um, say, well, I just can't hear him, I can't, it's not him that has stopped speaking. It's you that have gotten focused on something else. Philippians 2.13, don't rely on your own strength. I love how the Amplified puts it, for it's God who is always, all the while, effectually at work in you. God never stops working in you. And inside of you, there's energy rising up. He's creating in you power, creating in you a desire for the things of God. That old nature of sin is gone. There's a new nature inside of you. All you have to do is renew your mind and spend time in God's Word and with Holy Spirit. I, and I promise you, according to God's Word, that the things of this earth will grow dim as you stay focused on Jesus, His Word, and, and fellowshipping with Holy Spirit. I'm going to encourage you to take Philippians 2.13 in the Amplified, write it out, Put it on your fridge, maybe put it on the face of your iPhone, your iPad, your computer. Read this every day until on the inside you're so convinced that following Christ, being in His Word daily for some devotions, just talking to Holy Spirit, asking Him for help, learning to obey His direction, I'm telling you, your whole world is going to change. If Holy Spirit isn't a part of your daily life, then you simply aren't taking advantage of all the power and the wisdom that Jesus made available to you when He died on the cross. Having Holy Spirit in your life does not mean that you'll suddenly turn into what I call the fruits, nuts, and flakes of Christianity. Holy Spirit will work through you in a contemporary way. I call this the Spirit Contemporary Life. That means that as we serve God, filled with the Spirit, guided with the Spirit, and empowered by the Spirit, we should have supernatural ability, miracles in every area of our life, but we conduct ourselves with others and in front of others in a contemporary, relevant way that brings glory to Jesus. I hope you enjoyed the message today. If you did, I'd like to encourage you to keep tuning into the show and consider partnering with us and helping get this message to people all over the world. Here's how. When you partner with us, you are changing lives all over the world. So don't wait. I'd like to take a moment now and share with you how the concept of Spirit Contemporary began. Before entering full-time ministry, in his career as an emergency rescue worker, Leon Fontaine witnessed the pain and injustice of this world. As the son of a pastor, he struggled with these experiences, frustrated at how irrelevant the church seemed in this broken world. Over 20 years ago, Leon and his wife Sally began a journey to bridge this disconnect between the church and the hurting world. Motivated to take Holy Spirit's power beyond the four walls of the church, they created a culture that came to be known as Spirit Contemporary, spiritually alive, connected to the miraculous, but at the same time contemporary and relevant to the real world. Every woman here, every man here, you are designed to go into that business world and be better than anybody out there. In fact, let me just prophesy God's original intent is that every believer be at the top of the heap. Everyone. Remember that as a Christian, you can live life led by Holy Spirit and be contemporary at the same time. Father, I ask right now that the words that they've heard today would touch their heart. I pray in Jesus' name that you take them to a place of living with you where your presence brings them peace, brings power, and brings wisdom for every situation. I pray that in your wonderful name. 
all over the world, there are people who have not yet heard about the love of Christ, people who desperately need it. We all have an important part to play in sharing this message. God's given us this beautiful life to enjoy, but while you are living it, be very aware that the message you know that Jesus is the answer for the world today. Reaching people with the gospel is the very heartbeat of this ministry. This is why we work so diligently to make our programs relevant and contemporary, translating hundreds of materials into French, Spanish, Mandarin, Russian, Farsi, and many more. Because of the generosity of partners like you, our programs have been able to reach millions, not only here at home, but also in South America, Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. There is still so much work to do. We will not stand by idly because people's eternity lie in the balance. We need to act now. People need to hear about the love of Jesus and his amazing grace today. Together, we will share Jesus in a spirit contemporary way. And together, we will see miracles.